afternoon, everybody. My name is Sarah Ledger, and I'm assistant head teacher at Acklin Grange School um, in charge of teaching and learning and middle leadership development. I'm Johnny Laws. My official title is a transition teacher. I work with all students from, from, coming from Key Stage 2 um, up to Key Stage 3, and within our structure, I am a, a middle leader. And we've come today to talk to you about just a few of the things that we think we're using at Acklin Grange that really is driving our success of the school forward. Um, I was speaking to Year 10 yesterday, and they're asking me where I was today. Um, and I put the display up of the programme and Bilal said to me, oh, miss, you're sandwiched between a baroness and a lord. I thought that's quite a nice place to be at when you're ginger and from Middlesbrough. So that's quite nice, really. So what we're going to look at first, though, the English teacher in me cannot do a presentation like this without actually looking at English language. So what I want us to think about are two suffix, the suffix shun and the suffix ship. For those of you non-linguists in the room, shun is the act and process or result of something and ship is the characteristic or the skill of something right with my with my teacher hat on i'm going to give you a bit of a challenge all right a couple of minutes as it says up on the board how many words can you come up with with those two suffix all right we've had our lunch we've all been in the situation before a little bit kind of tired after lunch great lunch but let's get back into it now so straight back into period four how many words can you come up with feel free to work with your partner next to you or do it on your own it's up to you a couple of minutes 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We're down to 30 seconds. <laughs> Countdown clock needed, I'm sorry. Do, 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 do. This is low tech, I'm afraid. It's not a Microsoft conference. Do, do, do. <laughs> do, 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 boom. Okay, right. I'm assuming quite a lot of the words you can see on the board right now are the ones you may have come up with with yourself and your partner. Um, the act and process of something, or the result of something, the characteristic of something, is the kind of the memodus vivendi of our uh, middle leadership development. And a lot of those you can see have got all those very, very positive connotations, the kind of characteristics we all would like to possess in any job that we're in, never mind that most important one, which is the <coughs> middle leadership of our schools. Even the dreaded Ofsted triangulation is on there, uh, which is obviously the act and process of making things connect, which is super important in anything that we're obviously doing within whole school change. But if you actually think about those suffix, we then need to take it one step further and actually think about what a suffix actually is. So the definition on the board talks to it and the fact that it's actually a derivative. Okay, so it's a morphine added to the end of the word to form a derivative. So then we take that one step further again and think of de defining what a derivative actually is, which brings me to this idea of derivative leadership. Something which is copied or adapted from another source. A derivative is the value from a performance of an underlying entity. And if you start thinking about this process, you then start to think about actually what's driving your school. What is it that your middle leaders are adapting from? What are they copying? We all have been on a journey to wherever we are and ultimately you are reflecting upon those people above and around you. So thinking, what actually is it, the core belief of my school, the core belief of my senior leadership that I want copying, adapting, and then actually having that underlying identity being something which drives everything forward? Nothing like putting the pressure on at a national conference to be told you're a middle leader and you're also the engine room to the school. So I've come to you to kind of talk to you about that and kind of ask that question of how that works within your school. Thinking about the, when we were talking about the, the shun as an action, what action are you taking with your middle leaders to make sure that they're on board, they're kind of healthy within that engine room because ultimately with their teams that they're working with, that will have on, that, will, try again, that'll have that knock on effect of either positivity or negativity. So what kind of process are you going through with your middle leaders that's having that effect? Is it kind of all heading in the same direction as your long-term plan for your school and where you want it to go from an SLT level? So just to kind of put it into context a little bit, Acklam Grange and Middlesbrough, we were an RI school for what seemed like forever. We went on a very rough and rocky journey in order to get stamped with the good in February 2016 with leadership at all levels being deemed as outstanding. And then in the summer, in August, our results, you can see from the, the screen in front of you, have been superb. And I do believe that that big shift 
was because of the way in which we altered the way we were investing our time and our money and our kind of real passions towards our middle leaders. Teaching development is something that schools do day in, day out, but sometimes I do strongly believe that we do neglect that middle, real important core engine room of our schools. Um, I was reading this morning the Ofsted report that was launched just at 10 o'clock this morning. I was on the train and the Ofsted National uh, Annual Report's out. And it states that three quarters of the schools nationally who are graded inadequate for leadership are in the north of England. Now that's obviously where I'm from, that's where my school is. So there's something about the things we're doing at Ackham Grange that's booking that trend. So this kind of presentation is, the next step is how are we potentially booking that trend? And what you can see is quite a challenging comprehensive school. So going back to the point I was talking about a moment ago, obviously building on what Sarah was saying then, a question for you of how healthy is that engine room? How healthy is that engine room within your school? And for me to stand here and say that as, as a teacher, as a middle leader, I don't get stressed, all that stuff in the media is a load of rubbish, what's this about not sleeping, all that kind of stuff. Of course it is. Of course everyone's under a lot of pressure. There's no need to hide that, there's no need to, to overhype it. But at the same time, I feel healthy within my school. And I know that might sound a little bit cliched, and yes, I need to be healthy. I had the, the fantastic privilege of going to New York with sound training to kind of develop a, a transatlantic link for our school and to run the marathon over there. Um, but within my school, I feel happy because of the things that are put in place as a mid leader for me to feel trusted, for me to feel equipped and for me to deal with my team and work with my team so that I can really get the best out of them and pass on that message that's coming from SLT because that for me is really important and I can sit there and be told about everything that's coming through and how it works, but it's me that's got to kind of make it happen and me that needs to be trusted by SLT so that I can go and make things happen with my team and ultimately get the very best out of those students who are sat there in front of us every day. Johnny almost brought his uh, New York Marathon medal that he just got. How long did it take you? For too long. 426. I was well, happy with it. 426. That's good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and he was, uh, yesterday we were going through this and he said, I'm going to take my medal, I'm going to wear my medal. I was like, no, please don't, because I've only got a 2K from the fun run last year and that makes me look pathetic. Baroness Campbell following me, I didn't think it was quite... <laughs> so we left the medal at home. But um, that kind of that idea of this healthy engine room and that, the, the sense of where we're, where we're driving schools forward is, is really a big focus of, of what we're wanting to be looking at. So that professional development happens in every school, but why does it happen? Why does it happen within your school? It has, this is my, I went to Acton Grange as a student, I then went to Ackland Grange and did my GTP through Ackland Grange, left was working in South Yorkshire and now I'm back for a third time. Because I love the school or, well, you can make your mind up on that one. Um, but it is obviously means a lot to me and in that time I've seen a lot of shifts. And I've seen the shift from, historically, and in other places I've worked, that professional development happening because it needs to happen. Staff attending because they need to those extra hours, they need to make up that time for PD days or because it's purely a tick, tick box exercise. Within Ackland Grange, that professional development is the last piece, as the kind of the picture suggests, of the jigsaw. Everything else is in place, and Sarah will talk about that a little bit more in a moment. Everything else is in place for that professional development to, to be kind of the, the cherry on top of the cake, to really top off what is happening. And when it happens, we know why it's happening, and it's justified to happen, and therefore people want to do that professional development. So again, another question. Is that happening in with your, your school? Are your staff wanting to do that professional development because they appreciate that it is kind of the, the final piece in the landscape of the bigger picture within your school? So what do your current training sessions actually look like? And more importantly, actually, one of the things that we reviewed about a year ago is how is the time in those training sessions spent? This is where this all becomes a little bit ironic because I'm going to talk to you about a model that I'm not exhibiting today, which is shameful, really. But how, how actually are your staff, when they're together, what are they actually doing with their time to foster that real sense of development and togetherness? We call it the Acklam Grange community, the Acklam Grange family, and it really does feel like that. Um, the Department of Education released in July this year their Standard for Teachers Professional Development. If you haven't looked at it, please do. It's a, quite a, it's a worthy document to read. And I believe there's a golden thread that goes through that that talks about time, trust and tools. And for me, as an assistant head in charge of putting this together, it was that concept of time that was really important. We're time bereft 
as teachers and we, we have to battle everything to do with our timetable and all of our other jobs that need doing. So how do we make sure that time that's so precious to our staff is used at its absolute best once everyone's together? And more importantly, actually, how is the legacy then created? What are we putting in place to make sure that teachers can access that training beyond that hour's session? So therefore, we've got to get Corvi out and think of going from teaching everything backwards, going with the, starting with the end in mind. This big school vision, how is that then cascaded right down to make sure that our training has sticking power? And you therefore, you're going to come up with all sorts of ideas that you can, therefore, you can see on the screen in front of you. Um, how is it responding to your quality assurance cycle? What's, where have you put in your quality assurance cycle time for things to be responded to? How is it bespoke? How is it innovative? And how is it involving everybody that needs it to be involved in? Oh. Ah. So if in doubt, get blooms out. Now, we do flip learning at Ackham Grange with our students. We weren't doing it with our staff. It seemed a bit incongruous, really, a bit peculiar. For those of you that don't know, flip learning is the principle that you give the content and the knowledge, the lower end of blooms, prior to any kind of face-to-face -face meeting or face-to-face -face session with students and with staff. Okay, this is nothing new. But what it allows you to think about is that idea of time. Do we want our precious teachers, our most valuable resource in any school, sat listening to somebody? My answer to that is no. What I want my teachers to do, my most valuable asset in my school, is to actually be sat applying, analysing, synthesising and evaluating together. So we've flipped it and we've created a legacy. So what we do is we produce all the training materials prior to the actual informed session, the face-to-face -face session. Um, flip videos via Microsoft Mix, super, super easy, reading material, whatever it is, anything at all. And it goes out the Friday before, usually. Staff will spend a couple of days doing it. There's space in school in, for them to do it. Um, any, any evening, lunchtime, we have techie brekkies, etc. Um, so they can do all their flip learning in school if they choose to. They then come to the session and they get paused with the big question that was at the end of the flip learning session. And that then generates that first amount of discussion. And straight away, they're starting to apply the thought process that, that we're doing. The other beauty of this is it then allows you to kind of scaffold your whole quality assurance process. So for instance, we're launching eSchools. Monday's night's faculty leading session was the input. Friday's PD day, people spent the whole day putting all this thing together. So we didn't have any of that, well, when am I getting the time to do it? I'm handing you the time to do it. Let's do it together. Let's do it productively. And while we're there, let's be evaluating the same process. And actually, if you then take blooms a little bit further, you then start to think about the language of that productivity. So the fact that your, your PD sessions with your middle leaders can be really about practicing and developing and interpreting something to then allow you to question together, then come up with some sort of um, interrogative statement to improve it, to move on, and then suddenly debating whether it is actually going to work or not. And it's a simple, simple thing, but that flipping of those training sessions has made a huge difference to the productivity of the middle leaders and a huge difference to them feeling like they can own it because they can then flip their own training. And we also have put a structure in place where the Monday night is the directed time night, but choose is totally voluntary. You sign up via Eventbrite and you can come to as many as you want or as few as you want or none. No one chases you up for it. We have a staff of 64 teachers. On average, we have about 42, 38 a week volunteering to come because it's kind of the part of a process and the ethos now of the entire school. So as that cascades down, the most important thing that we've been talking about today, embedding that leadership all the way down, how does that happen? How does that work when it comes to me? What's a knock on effect for, from these three key points when it comes to working with me? and my, my team. The time, we've got that time, we can watch those videos whenever we want, all right? One member of staff at school, and he quite openly presented it, uses that, his toilet time as his, as his flipped learning time. <laughs> he watches his staff development. That's disgusting, I'm in, on those videos. 
That's just made me feel quite sick, oh. actually. <laughs> Don't take it personal. Um, but, but they've got that freedom, and it's kind of time to digest the knowledge kind of that, that's been there. Something's put to you. We'll sit there on a, on a night, or we'll come in on a Monday morning and talk about it in the office before we've got that training on the Tuesday night, or before it gives us that chance to sit down as a team, as a faculty, to really discuss what's going on, how this works with us, what doesn't. I can go and see someone in that time and say, look, how does this work with us? I can phone someone to come down because nothing is new on that night. When we're looking to apply it, when we're looking to um, kind of evaluate what's going on, nothing's new. We know all the information, so it gives us that time to truly kind of evaluate what's going on. The tools, everything that we do within our staff training, it's something Sarah's quite passionate about, can instantly be lifted into your lessons the next day. There is nothing that takes weeks and weeks of planning. There's no kind of concept. Yes, there's some things that you will want to develop over time, all right, but it's instantly things and sharing of the best practice that really, really works and really, really works for your staff. So my staff can say, well, look, I'm unsure on this. We can look, they can pick on Eventbrite kind of which sessions they want to go to. And it's constantly writing any sort of wrongs or just developing people to make them even better within the classroom. And the trust. And that's the most important thing. For me to stand here as a middle leader and be able to talk to you, it's the trust that I get from my SLT to be able to do things. A couple of weeks ago for Remembrance, um, I had 110 of the most vulnerable students within school who developed 1,018 poppies um, because in 1940, 1950, 1916, um, 118 soldiers from Middlesbrough died during World War I. And they're going to build that all, all the way up to 3,127 by, it sounds like, it sounds, seemed like a great idea at the time, but making them. Um, so by the time we get to 19, um, 2018, they'll have done that. That's their thing. As a result of those students doing that, because I could take it to them because of the training I've had, because what's been invested in me, I could go, we could have it quality assured, we could go through that process together. For those 150 students who aren't achieving in the classroom, their video has been viewed 12 and a half thousand times on Facebook. There's people commenting from Australia, and for them, that's the most tremendous thing. They, they wrote a letter to get a singer in, they wrote a letter to do this, um, to get people in. They had the buglers, they had people in. It was a full service with all 1,400 students out there. And that happened because of the development, the trust, the tools, and everything that's been invested in me, that I then invested in my staff that then goes down to the students, who ultimately achieve and feel fantastic because of the process. And that was kind of us in our context, a bit of a snapshot, really. We are doing a workshop tomorrow to do with reading and the curriculum and using reading really as a central part of your, um, your curriculum mapping. Um, and that, and you can see there, is just some of the things that we do at Ackland Grange in terms of the whole leader. Uh, the AGS development programmes that you can see there, rising, rising stars, NQTs, shining stars, are those teachers with that little bit of glimmer of excellence that we use as our coaches, and then the shooting stars is the middle leadership programme. But the thing about all those different programmes is a member of SLT assigned to each of them. So there's an absolute dedicated person who from a senior level is making sure that that is happening. That hasn't cost the school any extra cash. It's just been a refiguring of our roles and responsibilities. Um, just, and I, I think again, I think that's been a huge part of our prog progress. Um, like I said, we are doing a workshop tomorrow. We're round and about for today and tomorrow. If you want to come and chat about any of the things on there, then please just grab us. We'd love to have a, have a conversation with you. Um, we are just proper normal teachers. Um, we just work in a fabulous school in the northeast that gets a terrible bad rap. Middlesbrough being the worst town in the worst region in the country. And we have booked a trend. Our results, you know, top 2% for whole school progress eight and English progress eight is something that we are very, very proud of. Um, and obviously Claire's now gonna want to come and finish off the presentation. Thank you, Bill. Thank you.